Hello, I'm Money Shift, and today we have a 2023 F-150 XL, but you wouldn't know it by looking because there's no XL badging, and that's because this is an STX appearance package truck. The price on this thing is $52,060, and we get there by way of some discounts because, you know, factory issues, so you're not actually getting everything that's on the XL and everything that's on the STX, so they take some money off. Off. This is a 2023 model with the 5 liter V8 that actually gets 22 MPG on the highway, which is better than a lot of mid-sized pickup trucks, and it allows this thing to do over 600 miles of driving on a full tank, which is bonkers. That 5 liter V8 costs 2300 the STX appearance package costs 25 add on some extra towing like the trailer tow package for 1300 and those 20s for 1200 and you get to that $52,000 price tag. So thanks to those discounts, we're saving a little bit of money, but let's look at the truck we're getting because this is an XL F-150. This is supposed to be the base. This is supposed to be the bottom of the totem pole, but thanks to the STX package, we're zhuzhing it up a little bit and that all starts with this front end. The STX appearance package is unique and I love it. This grill is fantastic and the easiest way to mask how a truck looks cheap is by getting rid of all the black plastic and they do that here on the STX by making it all body color. The unique grill looks fantastic. The blacked out headlights make a otherwise halogen cheap headlight look a little bit more premium. And that's why you go the STX route because you get things like fog lights, you get a lot of body color, you get the tow hooks in the front. This truck does not look like an enterprise rental pickup truck. It looks like something a little more than that. These are the 20s. This is actually the first time I've seen an F-150 with these optioned and I actually think they look great with this STX. And again, I'm calling this an STX, not an XL because there is no XL branding on this truck. It says STX everywhere under the F-150, STX, on the back here, STX. So for all intents and purposes, Ford isn't conveying the fact that this is a base model truck, and that's what the STX is for, is to hide the base model-ness of a base XL truck. Around back, standard fare here, nothing crazy, thanks to this trailer package, you got all the pin connectors you could ever want to connect any trailer you could ever want. You got a light there for the license plate and an extra port here for power powering your trailer. It's very well set up, very well integrated, and of course it is. Ford's been making these forever. While we don't have any bed liner, we do have onboard power, which is really nice, and I love this bed here where it has these holes for clamps. I think that's great. It's a really nice little neat feature that folks that are going to put this truck to work would likely use, or hey, if you're playing beer pong, maybe you're using that to hold down something. I don't know. Get creative. It is what it is. You got the onboard power there. You have some tie downs on the sides, but you have no LED lighting back here like you find in a lot of other Ford products, which is a little bit of a bummer. That gate, that tailgate is really easy to close. Honestly, Ford has done a great job. It's pretty light. Making our way to the inside, this is where you start to realize we're, we're dealing with an XL. You got a lot of hard, scratchy plastic. That where you put your arm is nice, but everything else is hard plastic, okay? There's nothing soft here. You got a ton of places to put things, coins, cigarettes, Twinkies, whatever you want. You got room to put them all. Your window switches are right there. And to open up this super cab, that lever pops it right open. Looking at this back door, same thing. It's all hard plastic, except for the one place where you would put your arm. Again, you have just as much storage back here because if you're riding in the backseat of an F-150, you also have Twinkies, cigarettes, who knows, to have as well. So Ford gives you all that room. The XL's seats are actually quite nice. I like these ribbed portions, which help blood flow on long trips to keep you, you know, energized. You got Ford bits there, and of course, it's a $50,000 truck, but it's an XL, so no power seats. Auto light control, and you have a tailgate, uh, excuse me, a bed light there as well, which is nice. It just turns on the third brake light to act like a, a bed light. 
You have lane keep assist, which is nice in a larger pickup truck like this, especially in an XL. The right switches on the steering wheel control this display. And let's take a look at it, because even though it's a small digital display, it is a very vibrant digital display. Sync 4 there, because this is the STX, which is great. A basic key with just lock and unlock, no remote start on the key here. And let's fire it up. On start, you hear a little bit of rumble from that V8, and you see that mega vibrant screen brighten up. And while it is very small, again, I'm going to use the word again, it's vibrant, it's colorful, it's snappy, and it's got all the things you'd want, okay? You got your MPG, which is always going to be low. Actually, it's not. It's not. You saw 22 MPG highway. It's not actually that bad. You can leave it on your speed, which is where I would leave it, but there's a lot of other little functionality and things you could do there as as well now this middle screen is sync 4 you got apple carplay android auto and built-in navigation which is nice the resolution on the camera is decent no 360 cam here like we got in the upper level f250 that we reviewed a little bit ago buttons and knobs buttons and knobs buttons and knobs are everywhere no automatic climate this is an xl you get onboard power you have an integrated trailer assist with that 1200 dollars package and boom this is how you control your drive modes and also to switch it into four high or four low now the drive modes are normal slippery deep snow and sand mud rut which is interesting and that's it right you're this isn't an fx4 this isn't a tremor this isn't anything crazy so maybe you can add those later with ford scan but stock you don't get those and again because this is an f-150 you got tons of storage storage upon storage upon storage you want to put something in this car you can fit it you got a laptop you want to work with you can do it you want to use that as a table that's fine whatever you want to do you can do in this truck you can fit your whole 800 square foot apartment in los angeles that you're spending 10 g's a month for in this truck and an interesting feature is if you keep it in gear and turn it off it shifts to park for you super cool love that i think it's an interesting touch especially when it is a stock shifter like this f-150 50. Close these doors. Let's try to get in the back. Now, all the time when I do these tests, I leave the seat where I would sit. I'm six feet tall just to show you the room, okay? And I don't have any. I don't have any leg room. I have a little bit of headroom, but the seat back is vertical and upright and not that comfortable. So you don't, you won't want to spend that much time here. Now, you can put baby seats or things like that back here. You can bring your kids or your parents or your friends, whatever, down the street it's not that big of a deal but if you're going on a road trip no one is going to be sitting in the back of this thing you don't have that much space it is pretty tight the greenhouse is nice you do have some hangers there on the left and the right to hang your suit jacket if you're going to church or wherever you're going you got places to be and you want to hang up your stuff no problem very easy to open very easy to close that super cab door so no problems there but let's look at the cash and prizes the reason why I'm super excited about this F-150, and that is what's under the hood. Under the hood, we are working with a 5-liter V8 from the Ford Mustang. And in this truck, it makes 400 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque. And Ford has been making this dual overhead cam V8 for a long time, so you know it's going to work. But enough about all the details. Let's get behind the wheel. On the road again. <laughs> That's what it feels like every time I hop into a big pickup truck like this F-150. I just want to blast some Kenny Chesney and head all the way to Nashville. I don't know why. Cars, for whatever reason, when I get behind the wheel of them i just feel like i embody the ethos of the car i drive my kona n very differently than i would drive this f-150 and i feel very differently in this f-150 than i would feel in my hyundai kona n so what do we have for you guys today well we have ford's newest f-150 the 2023 model with one of ford's oldest engines we got the five liter v8 under the hood with the 10 speed automatic transmission so how does this thing go 
because let's be honest, it's not cheap. While this is Ford's cheapest, right? You know, one of Ford's cheapest options. The fact of the matter is this is still a $52,000 truck. So it's not Ford Maverick levels of cheap anymore. You used to be able to get a V8 F-150 for in the 30s, but hey, times have changed. We all have heard the inflation thing a hundred thousand times, but there's no time like the present where that feels true. When a base F-150 with a V8 and the STX package is $52,000. But with that price increase does come a lot of actual car increase. While I'm driving one of the base model F-150, shout out to that Maverick, that thing looks awesome. Uh, it doesn't really feel base level. Yes, I have a vinyl steering wheel. Yes, I have cloth seats, but I have SYNC 4. I have a really nice digital little screen right there that gives me a lot of information, you know, and this 10 speed, this thing just wafts along the road. I'm cruising at 45 miles per hour and this car has 1,000 RPM. I can't even hear that engine. And there's a V8 under the hood. That's not even a four cylinder. It's not even a three cylinder like the Trailblazer that we drove a few weeks ago. When it comes to your inputs, all the tactility, tactility in the switches is spot on. The knobs feel great. The rubber around the knobs feels solid. The turning radius feels good. Even though this is a vinyl steering wheel, it feels fine. It doesn't really feel cheap. The switches here for the blinkers just feel robust. Ford has done a good job at cultivating the image of the pickup truck and really nailing it in their F-150. There's a reason why they sell a boatload of these. But how is it, okay? This car is 29 miles on it. Let's give it a little gas, not too much. You hear that engine roar, the V8 sounds awesome. 10 speed with snappy upshifts. Overall, this thing is pretty quick. Holy cow, what the heck? That increased the rate of speed really, really fast. Steering feels, you know, pickup steering. It's actually a little more direct uh, than I'm used to in a pickup truck. I quite like that. While there isn't a lot of feeling, there's not a lot of on-center play in this F-150 like you would find in most other pickup trucks, and that's pretty nice. Uh, it means your movements are met with action, and it feels a little more car-like as a result. Nice, deep, baritone rumble out of that five liter V8. We freaking love this engine. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Brakes feel relatively solid as well, honestly. Greenhouse out of an F-150 is also unmatched. I love this kink in the window here that just gives you that extra space. And even though we don't have the large mirrors, we have the signature Ford mirror in mirror, which gives us all the visibility we need to compensate for the fact that we don't have blind spot in this $50,000 truck. This infotainment system, SYNC 4, same one that I had in my Bronco, works very well. You get a factory based navigation system, which is great for some times where you don't have cell phone service, and you also get access to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which takes up the full screen. It's a very snappy system. It works very well. We love the SYNC 4. You know, this thing just glides along the road. I understand why a lot of folks, even if you don't do much truck stuff, buy a truck. These cars are remarkably comfortable. You sit very high and something like this F-150 with this more direct steering with less on center play, it feels more like an SUV that maybe you've driven in the past. It's super approachable. It's easy to get in and out of. Even in this base trim, you have infinite engine options. Hell, at one point you could do everything from a diesel to a hybrid. I know they took the diesel away. RIP Power Stroke F-150 gang. Get up to speed here. Oh, that engine just sounds so good. This engine sounds so good. Ah, uh, I understand the power boost. I understand the EcoBoost options in the F-150, but damn, the throwback that this F-150 feels is just, ah, uh, it's so good, guys. I can't, I hope you're hearing how good this engine sounds because it just, it just adds another dimension to your driving experience. You're put putting along on the road like we are today. You're not feeling any of the bumps in the road. You're high off the ground. You feel like you're on top of the world. And on top of that, when you floor it, you just get the sound of a muscle car. Oh, 
baby. We're only shifting to 3K and this engine sounds awesome. Oh, by the way, it revs to 7,000 for a V8 in a pickup. We love that. That's only 1,000 RPM off an M3. And I know 1,000's a lot, but just let me have that win, okay? We're going around these tight corners here in New Hampshire. That is a beautiful house. And it just feels fine. Like, honestly, this is a really big vehicle. We're driving a pickup, but I, I feel like I can negotiate all of these corners with ease. Let's try a little, let's try a three point turn here. Full lock, full lock, full lock, full lock. Not bad. We throw it in reverse. We get access to that. Oh, we, now we're in reverse. No one behind us. Decent camera here. We're reversing. Not bad. Pretty easy to do. This shifter almost is too easy to use. Uh, because this shifter is too easy to use, it's very easy to go from drive to park instead of drive to reverse or park to neutral instead of park to reverse. It's very easy to just go up and down here. So how does this F-150 compare to the competition? Well, in F-150 land, you really got three other options. You got the GM twins in the Silverado and the Sierra, which recently got a facelift. They have a newer interior that in base form looks pretty similar to this, but in the upper trims, you get a nice larger screen and that has more tech as a result. I think that car has built in Google integration and overall it just works pretty seamlessly. If you want a diesel in a 1500 truck, that's one of the last places you can go. Hold on, let's take a listen again. I can't get over this engine, just sounds insane. All right, so from a tech direction, the GM Twins got a handle on the Ford, but overall day-to-day -day operation, there's something about this F-150 that just scratches every itch I got. This, this V, I cannot stress enough, this V8 is just so good, and that is something GM just can't match until you get to the 6.2 liter engine offered in only the upper trims, and you're gonna be spending bread to get that motor, so this Coyote has the advantage. If you're looking for a naturally aspirated V8 pickup truck, the Ford is a better, cheaper option than the GM is. It just has more character. It has more class with all the similar features. Now, when you compare this to something like the Dodge, the Dodge is going to drive better on a day-to-day -day basis. With the different suspension setup in the rear, you're gonna have more comfort. Hold on, we're accelerating. Let's take a listen. Oh, it's just so good, guys. So that engine sound is just... I freaking love it, holy cow. Um, so the Dodge is gonna have more comfort on a day-to-day -day basis. It has a little bit more tech, but to be frank, the Dodge tech, I think, will not age as well as something like this F-150. This design, this setup is classic. Knobs, switches, buttons, they all work very well, and you have a screen that is super responsive. In the Dodge, a lot of it is controlled by the massive screen, or if you have the regular big screen, it's still just something that likely will not age as well as this Ford F-150. As a result, I would go F-150 for that as well. Now, the biggest competitor in my view to this vehicle is the Toyota Tundra. The Toyota Tundra is all new very recently, more recently than this Ford. You get that twin turbo V6 for the same price, as this V8. It is similarly efficient, more capable, and has more space on the inside. You cannot get the Toyota Tundra in a similar super cab-like configuration. Both the Tundras come in four doors. It's just what size. I know it's a super cab, but it's a little bit easier to get in and out of a Tundra like that because they're four individual doors instead of ones that have to open butterfly style. Now, which would I take, Tundra or uh, F-150? <laughs> I, I, you know, I was going into this thinking it was Tundra, hands down, the new tech, the good looks, Toyota reliability, but guys, there is just something about this noise. <laughs> the noise, the torque, you're not going that fast, but it doesn't matter. This thing just sounds freaking awesome. And for you power hungry animals out there, you can boost these things up to the moon and they take it because Ford's been making this five liter heater for the last like decade, right? They've, they've been making this coyote motor for a long time and they've been improving it all along that process. So I think as a result, it's similarly fuel efficient to go this route versus the Tundra. So I'll, give me the NAV and let me live. 
Let me live and let me enjoy my old school. <laughs> I freaking love this thing, man. Holy cow. <laughs> get lane keep, you get all this jazz. You guys, like, ah. Uh. I know it's $52,000. I understand that is remarkably expensive, but if you time it correctly, Ford's incentives on the F-150 are absurd. For a long period of time, over the last two years, you could get an F-150 just like this one, 84 months at zero percent. And I'm not a financial advisor, but zero percent is zero percent for 84 months. That is ridiculous. It allows you to get a pickup truck like this for $50, $52,000 and be into it for the same price as this person that bought this Colorado and is paying 7% interest on a $38,000 Colorado because you're getting 0%. So definitely watch out for Ford because any given Sunday they do incentives that are crazy that just make trucks like this super appealing and there's a lot of indicators pointing to the fact that at the end of this year prices on these trucks will plummet because the stockpiles are increasing. I mean Hamden Ford here which by the way, check them out in the description, has a ton of F-150s, all of varying prices, all of varying options. They got XLs, they got XLTs, they got Lariats, they got the full nine, hell, they even have some Raptors and a couple Lightnings. So if you want your F-150, definitely give these folks a shout. Look, I just put it into park again. Are you kidding me? And I put it into neutral. There we go, we did it. <laughs> so give these folks a shout because it could be F-150 season for me. I freaking love this thing. Holy cow. All right, folks, that's Money Shift. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.